The Bucks. The Bucks. They're back. back in it. How fans are feeling this morning about the NBA Finals. And we are, of course, tracking chances for some showers as we go through the work week. We have everything you need just minutes away. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Oh, a lot of fans excited about the Bucks oh, this yeah. morning. Only down one. Every, like our, our producer Devin's been saying, got to lose two to win four. Bucks and so six. So you can win in six. Bucks and six. They're back on track. How was your weekend? It was good. How was yours? I celebrated the anniversary. I remember Ten that. years of blissful marriage. Congrats. Uh, it's a big deal. You, yeah, shipped the, most of the kiddos uh, up to grandma and grandpa's and uh, had, a nice, uh, had a nice weekend with my wife. Little dinner. A little romance. Yeah, you got out. You're, you had a busy weekend. Yeah, we went camping up north for one night, headed back to Highland for another night for a family graduation party. Congrats, Peyton, my little cousin uh, from graduating high school. Great weekend with family. All right, it was a, it was a great weekend, and uh, we have some uh, changes in the weather coming up. It's not going to feel quite as nice as it did over the weekend. But what a Monday, right? We need to start with a live look at the Pfizer Forum this morning, where the Bucks back in the series after a Game 3 victory against the Suns. Giannis Antetokounmpo. 41 points for him last night. They beat the Suns 120 to 100. Our Adam Duxter has fan reaction. After a game with plenty of fireworks inside Pfizer's forum, it was time for the fireworks outside. An amazing game. You know, the energy here was immaculate. You know, they haven't been to the finals since 1974. I was born in 01, so I haven't, I've never seen them like, you know, get this far. So I'm lit. And the excitement spanned across multiple generations of the Bucks faithful. It was so loud. This is not my normal voice either, by the way. I'm so hoarse right now. Like, I, my voice was gone by halftime. And I, just, I couldn't hear myself think. It was, it was crazy in there. The energy was awesome. More than 17,000 days have passed since the last time the Bucks have played in the NBA Finals. So while the younger fans in the Deer District definitely savored the moment. It was spectacular. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, Bucks and six pretty much. Yeah. Those who've truly experienced the highs and lows the last 47 years have brought with them can appreciate just what the win meant. Absolutely awesome. This is history in the making, like they say. It's, it's great to see as, as a lifelong Bucks fan. It's awesome. The series will continue with game four here in Milwaukee Wednesday night before heading back to Phoenix for game five. And if the prophecy does come true and it is Bucks in six, the Milwaukee Bucks will have a chance to clinch their first NBA championship in a long time here in Milwaukee in game six. Reporting in Milwaukee, Adam Duxter, News 3 Now This Morning. Adam Duxter, thank you very much. So overnight, Giannis joining some legendary company. He is now the third player in finals history to have back-to-back -back games with 40 points and 10 rebounds. That's something only Shaquille O'Neal and LeBron James have done before him. Well, now the Bucs are considered back in the series, but still trail 2-1 to one against the Suns. We've been here before, though. Milwaukee's been down 2 to nothing against the Nets, and they won that series. And listen to this. The Bucs in games 3 through 7 are the best Bucs team, really. They're 10 and 2 in those playoffs during the final uh, four games of a series, compared to just 3 and 5 in the first two games of the series in these playoffs. They'll attempt to even things back up game four Wednesday at Pfizer Forum. We'll get you ready for the game Wednesday morning and have a recap and a look ahead on Thursday. If you have our News 3 app, you'll get the latest Bucks updates as soon as we get them. The app's free wherever you get yours. All right, check out this tornado out of Illinois yesterday. All caught on camera. Pretty incredible video here. This was reported in Virginia, Illinois, just west of Springfield. The sheriff in that county says there were widespread power outages, reports of trees down, but no reports of any injuries at this point. Some good news coming out of Illinois this morning. Yeah, uh, Chris Reese, you got out and you tried to chase some storms over the weekend. Yeah, on Friday, I uh, went over to the parts of Iowa as some of those showers of thunderstorms moved on through. Quite strong there, and this is the same system that's bringing some of the showers out there this morning. You really see them rotating all around this area of low pressure throughout parts of central Illinois. That was what or that is rather what is responsible for some of the light showers that we had out there early on this morning. Now, a lot of that's already started to move out of the picture, folks, but we're seeing at least some of those showers as you work your way throughout parts of central Illinois. Right here in Dane County, we are all dry now after seeing those showers work their way on through, and we're really going to stay dry for most of today. But as long as that area of low pressure is nearby, we at least keep that slight chance 
for a shower or a thunderstorm around. Temperature wise, we are into the 40s, 50s, and 60s this morning. Black River Falls, Camp Douglas, both at 45. 56 towards the Dell, 64 though, as you jump down towards Janesville. Meanwhile, we are at 58 in Madison. Here comes that sun rising above the horizon, but we're going to see that cloud cover generally on the increase as we go throughout today. Still, though, it'll be filtered with some sunshine trying to peek through. The graphics want to be a little bit more dreary, but I do believe we'll see some sun. Temperature wise, we'll top out right around 76. Later on, as we go towards the middle part of the week, we'll see some better chances for some showers and thunderstorms trying to get through here. This is overnight. You'll see those lows right around 64 degrees or so into tomorrow. You might try to see or you will see a couple of showers trying to pop up in the morning. Then the afternoon we'll see more sunshine. Temperatures will be into the 80s at that point. Now we're watching Wednesday into Wednesday afternoon. That's when our next chance for showers and thunderstorms moves into the picture. They have the chance to be the most widespread showers and thunderstorms. We know we need it. Here's a drought monitor right now from last week. We are still in a moderate drought. The good news is the severe drought, the extreme drought, that has started to shrink, but our rainfall deficit is still pretty high. I'm going to be showing you guys that as we go uh, through about the next 10 minutes here. But here's what happens. Once we get beyond Wednesday, afternoon and evening and into Thursday, our rain chances really dry up and there are very few rain chances to be seen as you look far ahead throughout the next 10 days. All right, we know you'll keep track of it. Thanks, Chris. Happening now, Wisconsin wildlife officials say to stay on the lookout for sick birds. The Wisconsin DNR made the request as they noticed signs of a mysterious illness in our state. It's the same illness wildlife managers are seeing on the East Coast, but right now there is a no identity for this sickness. They don't know what the heck it is. Scientists are working though to figure it out. Right now in Cuba, new video in overnight of protests sparking across that country. Thousands took to the streets of Havana and other cities. Historic numbers there for a country that rarely sees uprisings. Cuba is seeing its worst economic crisis in decades, along with an uptick in COVID numbers. Food shortages and high prices are rampant there. During the protests, Cuban authorities repeatedly blacked out the Internet as people tried to live stream the events. Stateside protests in Miami as well. Hundreds of Americans calling for an end to Cuba's decades old authoritarian regime. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez addressed the crowd, praising their support for their oppressed relatives in Cuba. The Miami police chief even tweeted the protest area would be supported by his officers. The White House says it's sending a team to Haiti in the wake of last week's presidential assassination. The delegation includes experts from the NSC, the State Department, and Homeland Security. President Biden says he wants to find out who's responsible for killing the country's president and hold them accountable. I think that's really where our energies are best applied right now in helping them get their arms around uh, investigating uh, this incident and, and figuring out who's culpable. As the investigation continues, Haiti has a man in custody this morning accused of orchestrating the assassination. 607 coming up. Consumer Reports is looking into whether we're being protected from faulty products that could have dangerous consequences. And biking for a cause. We'll show you how a couple of local men in Janesville are biking for charity this week and how you can help when we come back. When it comes to removing dangerous products from the marketplace, most of us assume that government regulators are able to move quickly to protect us. But that's not always true. Consumer Reports investigates a broken system that's leaving unsuspecting customers vulnerable to injuries or even death from dangerous products. A malfunctioning fire extinguisher, a lawnmower with a potential hazard, a nail gun defect that shoots nails sideways. All of these issues allegedly resulted in horrific injuries, yet you've probably never heard of any of them. How is that possible? Well, there's this law known as Section 37 that requires companies to notify the CPSC when there are lawsuits connected to their products that allege serious injuries or death. But our investigation found that the CPSC rarely learns of these lawsuits. People should know about these lawsuits and safety regulators should be able to investigate and take action as needed. The CPSC declined to comment on specific questions from Consumer Reports, but it's important to know that 
of the law, as originally proposed before it was enacted in 1990, called for companies to alert the CPSC about a product when a single lawsuit had been filed alleging significant injury or death. But that's not what ultimately passed. It's now required to be reported after three lawsuits have been settled or found in favor of the plaintiff within a specific two-year period. Lawsuits like these often take longer than two years, so it's rare that the CPSC finds out about these lawsuits at all. In fact, over the last 25 years, only two companies have been cited for failing to report lawsuits to the CPSC. While Jonathan Judge, a lawyer who specializes in product safety counseling for manufacturers, says the law is fine as it currently stands, the failures of Section 37 have consumer advocates calling for change. Every lawsuit alleged Alleging injury or death should be reported to the CPSC when it's filed. The agency should have all the information it needs to keep potentially dangerous products out of people's homes. Meantime, heat and wildfires continue to devastate the West Coast this morning. About 30 million people in total are under heat warnings right now. A wildfire in Northern California has destroyed homes. You're taking a look at the Beckworth Complex fire. That state's largest wildfire of the year. Over 86,000 acres burned so far. The fire caused by two lightning caused fires growing into one another. Over 1,200 fire personnel continue to work hard to contain it. There's three main things that firefighters have to deal with when they're out there. It's the extremely critically dry fuels, uh, extremely low humidity, it's only around 10%, and then the high heat and the high winds. Right now, officials say only 20% of this fire is contained. The West still under a major drought right now, and we are too. Chris Reese, with your certified most accurate forecast, are we getting any rain chances to help us out, Chris? The good news is we do have some rain chances to work with, but our deficit continues to increase even times when we see the rain chances around here. So we saw some light rain overnight, only really amounted towards a trace, but still, we should have seen about 20 inches of rain at this point of the year. I mean, we're halfway through the year at this point and we've only seen 12. So our deficit is just over eight inches shy of where we should be when it comes to the rainfall this time of the year. But we do have some other rain chances that we're going to be watching as we start to move forward. In the meantime, our moderate drought continues. This is an improvement, though, from where we were because we used to have severe drought all the way in towards Madison. But we saw some good rainfall around here while I was on vacation that helped some things. The problem is the rain chances we're going to be seeing as we move forward aren't necessarily the greatest around here. Now, as you plan out your day, we have the sunshine now. Cloud cover moves in later on. Temperatures stop out around 76, but even with the cloud cover, I don't suspect much rain to fall out of those clouds. We're really going to keep a slight rain chance around today. Otherwise, for the most part, things are going to be dry. Some better rain chances will move into the picture by the time we get you towards Wednesday and to Thursday. We'll watch that one closely. Beyond that, that's really our best chance to see some rainfall around here. Traffic-wise, we are seeing a lot of green on the area highways this morning. That's how you love to see it. The interstate in good shape, the Beltline in good shape, East Washington. East Wash and West Wash are also in good shape this morning. If we see any issues pop up around Dane County, of course, we will be sure to let you know. Chris Reese, thank you very much. 615 now, new this morning, Badger guard Jonathan Davis, now a gold medalist after USA basketball beat France in the FIBA World Cup. It was a close final with the U.S. pulling out the win by just two points. They didn't lose a single match throughout the tournament, though, going 7-0. Jonathan Davis only had one point in the final. Still counts, though. He's going to be wearing that gold medal <laughs> as he prepares for a new Badger season. Congratulations to him. Mm -hmm. In the 608 this morning, some local bikers are about to take off on quite the journey, all to benefit a free health clinic. This is so neat. Josh Breider live along the Ice Age Trail, heading them off this morning in Janesville. Hi, Josh. Hey guys, good morning. Yeah, busy morning here along the Ice Age Trail. We've seen deer, we've seen turkeys, of course, a lot of folks checking out the trail here right now, but we've got a pretty special story this morning. We're going to introduce you to a couple of guys who are actually riding for a cause. They're going to be supporting Rock County Health Net this morning. You can see they're all geared up and we're actually going to see them go live on our air this morning as they take off on a 1300 mile trek. We've got Dan and Tom here this morning and you know, Dan Deusterback, this was kind of your idea. You kind of came up with this and you know, what's kind of the meaning behind this? Uh, the, the meeting was that we wanted to uh, bring some attention to Rock County Health Net. Uh, we were going to do the ride, but the next part of it all was that we wanted to see somebody benefit from the ride. Um, and I just wanted to say that um, it was through the sponsorship through Deusterbeck Brewery and Alcorn 
um, before I even got the words out of my mouth, um, they were on board. They wanted to take part. Um, they have been instrumental in giving us the support that we need. Uh, they're allowing us to hop on their social media platform. Um, all of this trip can be followed by the viewers that are interested um, just getting on the Deusterbeck Brewery and they'll be able to follow our trip. We're going to have pictures, maybe some short little video clips and stuff. For awesome. And Tom, you decided to kind of go along on this. And you know what kind of goes into a long bike ride like this? 1,300 miles, that's a trek. It is a trek. And I think uh, the best part about this trip is the fact that we, we start in Janesville and we end in Janesville. So it's just one big loop around the lake. But, um, you know, just getting ready for the gear, we've got we've got tech with us, cameras and uh, phones and computers, but we've also got all the gear that you got to have, pouches of tuna and, and uh, you know, cliff bars, cliff bars <laughs> you know, things to keep us energized, uh, gels and, and that, plenty of water. A little bit of everything, and of course, we've got Danielle Wegnan with uh, Rock County Health Net this morning. And you see this story, see what they're doing. You know, how important is this for you guys as far as the support goes? Incredibly important. So it takes an entire community and all the supporters to be able to provide the services that we do. So again, we are so grateful to you guys, and we hope for a really successful journey for you. And you're already seeing some money coming in for this already. Yes, we are. So they have some really awesome family and friends. They've kind of kicked it off. We have about $550 raised so far. And um, again, you can go to our website if you'd like to donate and be a part of this. Um, again, every dollar that we receive turns into $6.60 worth of care. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Of course, we're going to see them take off here on 645, guys. You're not going to want to miss that. But beautiful morning for a bike ride. If you want to learn more and if you want to help sponsor, $550 already. Let's get that number up. Just go to the story at channel3000.com. All right, sounds great, Josh. Thanks. Remember to let Josh know what inspires you in the 608. Reach out on social media or email him in the 608 at WICTV.com. Well, it's Shark Week. Uh, week's going to be full of uh, celebrity guest hosts all about sharks. Uh, Tiffany Haddish, William Shatner, Brad Paisley, Snoop Dogg, and others. Shark Week runs through... Uh, July 18th on Discovery and Discovery Plus, which is offering a full month of shark programming for subscribers. And you said there's some competition in the water, so to speak. Shark Fest. Where's that? On Disney Plus. Ooh. They do a Nat Geo programming on there. Uh, yeah. It's, just, it's funny how this has evolved. Like when we were kids, Shark Week was, it was just a week. I think Step now Brothers. It's like a month. Step Brothers really made this <laughs> it into did. a thing, didn't it? It did. It did. But Dad, Shark Week. All right, coming up in our next half hour, how to prevent the leading cause of injury-related deaths for children. And up next, two things you love on a hot summer day, but do you want them together? Stay with us. Welcome back. We always ask you to share your morning with us. And Mr. Kevin Charles Grunberg got this snapshot of a woodpecker out in Argyle. It's, oh, we've named him Bob. Right, Bob the Bird. We did the name Liberty. It was Bob. And I did look up pictures of woodpeckers to confirm because I wasn't sure earlier. So I was like, oh, I, I've got to find out. We need to start our own Autobahn society. <laughs> We'd be pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> we always get it wrong and we get a bunch of emails. <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about when it comes oh to birds. Oh, my gosh. We did uh, not specialize in birds. That was not fun. my science of specialty. We have a great time yeah. trying to guess what kind of nature you're sending in. So keep it coming, folks. It's always neat. Hey, so uh, there are a lot of things that we love in the summer here in Wisconsin. Beer, ice cream. But what about beer, ice cream? You put them together, we found it. Yes, we did. And, of course, it's here in Wisconsin, up in Green Bay. Badger State Brewery has added a beer-infused ice cream to its menu. The brewery says it's a great option for customers who aren't quite sold on craft beer. People who've tried it, though, say it doesn't even taste like beer. It's much sweeter. The company doesn't plan on this being a summer special, by the way. They have plans to sell it year-round. Like I said, this is the way to get me to drink beer or consume it. I guess I'm not drinking it As at long point. as it's strawberry-flavored, right? <laughs> I need it to be strawberry ice cream, There though. you go. The, uh, the sign there said that today's brew flavors was strawberry mango. It's I like would they were try that. For you. I don't think I've ever had mango ice cream, <laughs> uh, but I would try it. Okay. Mango is one of my favorite fruits. But your go-to is we've been giving you flack for this morning. It's strawberry, strawberry, strawberry ice cream. only. Yep. He it's doesn't strawberry like chocolate. Although, 
I do have to say, um, there's there's a local fast food chain. Every summer they do a peach milkshake, and that is the only other ice cream that I've liked. It is that peach milkshake every summer. Just happens to be sold by his first job ever, Chick Fil A. <laughs> I wasn't gonna reveal. Loyalist, but, <laughs> loyalist. But, over so here. I do enjoy that, um, but outside of the peach milkshake or strawberry. I do not like it at all. What's do you think you get a buzz from this stuff? It's got to have alcohol content, right? I don't know. Right? I think we should investigate. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds on like a, a job. <laughs> on, a, on a Friday night. On the clock. <laughs> all right. It is going to be feeling a lot like summer out there later this week. Yeah, temperatures are going to be on the increase. Today a little bit better. Not too shabby today. We're at 58 degrees right now. We'll warm up towards 76 later on this afternoon. We'll see a slight chance to see a shower out there. But later on this week, folks, temperatures... They'll be on the increase. We'll be at 86 the day after tomorrow. All right, there you go. Thanks, Chris. Stick around. We'll be back right after this. Right now, the updates expected in the disappearance of a Dane County couple, their son, in court as early as this morning. We have seen a couple of showers throughout the overnight hours. We're talking more shower chances in the week ahead. Your forecast just moments away. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Leah Lynchide. And I'm Chris Stanford. We start with continuing coverage of the missing couple from Dane County. As early as today, we expect to learn more about what may have happened to them. Bart and Krista Halderson's son, Chandler, could make his initial appearance in court today. He's currently in the Dane County Jail. We're also expecting the results of an autopsy done over the weekend of human remains found in rural Dane County. Sheriff Calvin Barrett told News 3 Now on Friday he is not willing to speculate on whether the remains are those of the couple. Here is what we do know right now. Bart and Krista were last seen on July 1st at their home. Their son Chandler told News 3 Now and law enforcement his parents left for a 4th of July trip to Langlade County before 6 a.m. on July 2nd. On July 8th, our Adam Duxter interviewed Chandler where he declined to go on camera. And then that evening, Chandler was taken into custody by the Dane County Sheriff's Office as a person of interest due to conflicting information that he gave to deputies. On Friday, human remains were found during a search for the couple. Now, when we do get an update, we will push that information out through our mobile app. You can find it for free wherever you get your apps. Happening today, a group of Madison and Dane County leaders will be talking about what to do next with the homeless camp at Rindall Park. The City County Home Homeless Issues Committee will be meeting this evening. They'll discuss how to move the homeless population to a different location. That proposal failed to pass the full City Council last week. Two subcommittees now have to review it before another vote. They'll also be talking about a proposed men's shelter for Madison. And in Milwaukee, Mayor Tom Barrett is directing more than $30 million to support housing problems in that city. The money is from the Federal American Rescue Plan. It would go toward programs to help folks avoid losing their homes as a result of the pandemic. And speaking of Milwaukee, live look at Pfizer Forum in downtown this morning. The whole state buzzing after the Bucks beat the Suns last night, 120 to 100 in Game 3 of the NBA Finals. It's the first Finals game won by the Bucks in nearly 50 years. Congrats to them. Big morning this morning. 6.32 now, Chris Reese joining us with your certified most accurate forecast. Happy Monday, Chris. Happy Monday to you guys, folks. We've seen a couple of showers out there early on, but now a lot of that's fallen apart, so we're dry throughout southern Wisconsin this morning. We're generally going to be dry throughout the rest of today, but we're going to watch the cloud cover try to stream in and increase itself just a little bit later as we move into the afternoon. Doppler track throughout the entire state of Wisconsin generally stays dry, but those showers this morning, they were brought to us by a spinning area of low pressure just to our south. It's been just far enough to the south that it really limited those rain chances that we had into the weekend. Here's the sunshine right now. See a couple of decorator clouds. Here's your thicker cloud deck just a little lower on the horizon there. It's really hard to see without the trained eye to look for it. 58 the temperature in Madison. Calm wind. Dew points are into the 50s too. But as we go through the week, even the dew points are going to increase as we track just a little bit more humidity into the area. 45 at Camp Douglas right now. That's the cool spot. Meanwhile, one of those warmer spots is going to be Kenosha coming in at 68. 64 for our friends at Janesville, Platteville. Good morning to you guys at 63. Good morning to the Dells, solidly in the middle at 56. But we see the rounds of cloud cover filtering through as we go throughout the day, even into the afternoon. That should generally keep those temperatures into the 70s. 
That being said, we'll see the sun shine through the cloud cover at times, so it's not a completely gray day at all, but still an overall mix of sun and clouds. It's what we call variably cloudy if you're looking at the forecast online. Overnight tonight, we're going to be down towards 64 degrees. Then tomorrow, we'll warm things up into the low 80s into the afternoon, but it's also possible that you get a stray shower early on in the day. The next focus of the forecast, though, it's going to be Wednesday afternoon into parts of Thursday. This is when that next system moves our direction as the best chance to bring some more widespread rainfall towards us and southern Wisconsin. But beyond Wednesday and Thursday, we really dry things out in our weather pattern while at the same time toasting things up back into the upper 80s. Potentially the humidity will keep it feeling like the 90s. All right, thanks, Chris. 634 uh, fun new little video making the rounds here on social media. It's like a love letter to Madison or at the very least a reminder of why the city consistently ranks among some of the best places to live in America. It was put together by videographer Sam Lee. It's his passion project you could say and the culmination of more than 60 hours of work. We kind of picked the things that we thought would look good on camera, but also would showcase uh, a decent amount of Madison's personality and flair. And so that ended up being what you see in the video, which is showcasing some artists. So Triangulador, who's a muralist in the video, and then of course some people from Barrio Dance Studio who are dancing, and then of course some of the active side of Madison, so biking and wakeboarding and wake surfing on the lakes. It's a three minute video called Best City Ever. It celebrates Madison, showcasing why it's the perfect place to spend this summer. You can find a link. Just go to channel 3000.com. 635 now. Over the next few weeks, the Recipe for Health team is focusing on the importance of embracing self-identity. They're encouraging all to be proud of who you are, your talents, interests, and to simply be you. Chris Reese here now with this week's Time for Kids. Hey, Chris. Yeah, good morning. This is an important topic because self-esteem and being confident in ourselves uh, are two things that we know are incredibly important. But what kind of impact does that have on your child's health? SSM Health family physician Rupra Shah says that self-esteem begins as early as babyhood and keeping that self-esteem positive can be a benefit to mental health, too. When kids have this, they're more likely to try new things, set more ambitious goals for themselves. Um, and then confident teens tend to stand more by their morals and their beliefs. So they're going to make better choices when faced with um, situations where they're faced with peer pressure um, or other things like that. Dr. Shaw goes on to say that higher confidence and self-esteem can also develop stronger resilience when dealing with life's failures. On the contrary, lower self-esteem may not only lead to anxiety or depression, but can also lead to potential physical health risks as kids who lack confidence are more likely to engage in risky behaviors such as drug abuse and alcohol use as well. Now, of course, our Time for Kids Recipe for Health team, it's always asking what you guys want to hear about. So folks at home, you can let us know what health topics you're interested in. You can share your family's health story with us, just go online to SSMHealth.com slash time for kids. It starts early building that self-confidence for your kids. It's the seed that I'm trying to plant early on, reminding them that it's okay to fail. You got to learn from those opportunities and to embrace who they are, yeah. you know, because, uh, you know, the hope is, is that down the road, it's going to pay dividends. One thing I learned growing up, confidence is everything. Um, and I remember even in middle school, one, one teacher said, you know, you may not always know what you're talking about, but you're confident, <laughs> and that's what matters. You got plenty of it still. <laughs> Thanks, yep. Chris. My pleasure. All right, 637. Now let's take a live look this morning at Denver, home of the Colorado Rockies and the 2021 All-Star Game. Festivities kicked off last night, uh, and the Milwaukee Brewers, by the way, will have an impressive showing during that All-Star Game. Five players on the National League roster this year again. Corbin Burns, Josh Hader, Brandon Woodruff, John, uh, Freddie Peralta. They're all on there. And then over the weekend, catcher Omar Narvaez was added after a uh, future Hall of Famer and St. Louis Cardinals catcher Yadier Molina bowed out. It's the third straight year that the Brewers are going to have five on the roster. All-Star festivities kick off tonight with their home run derby. Pretty cool. All right, 637 now. Let's take a live look outside. Chris Reese is talking about a return to the humidity this week. Certainly going to feel more like July. We'll check in with his certified most accurate forecast after the break. And a new report shares ways we can keep our kids safe around the water this summer. Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call says he'll run for re-election. He made the announcement this weekend via Twitter. He says he's proud of his record of protecting public safety, public health, and the environment. 
He took over the job January of 2019 after beating Republican incumbent Brad Schimmel. At the White House today, President Biden will meet with the U.S. Attorney General on the topic of gun violence across the country. Yesterday, Milwaukee police say a three-year-old boy unintentionally shot himself when he found a loaded handgun. Police say he's at the hospital but is expected to be okay. A 23-year-old has been arrested on charges in that case. There is a new report out this morning to help keep your kids safe from drowning. It's the leading cause of injury-related death in kids ages 1 to 4. The report from the American Academy of Pediatrics shows in 2018, 900 children died from drowning. 7,200 were seen in the ER. Toddlers and teenage boys are at the highest risk, and one study shows more than half of drownings happen between 4 and 6 p.m. We have people coming and going from work. We have meal preparation. There's just a lot going on during that time frame, and it would be easy for a small child to get into the water unexpectedly. The report recommends multiple layers of protection for prevention, including close, attentive adult supervision in and around water and four-sided pool fencings with self-closing and self-latching gates. Some good advice there. 642 now, there are some local bikers about to take off on quite the journey this morning, all to benefit a free health clinic in the 608. Josh Spratter live along the Ice Age Trail this morning in Janesville with the story. It's the moment we've been waiting all morning for, Josh. Hey guys, yes, that is right. We are just moments away from Dan and Tom taking off on a 1300 mile trek around Lake Michigan and it's all for a good cause. Dan, you kind of were the one behind this, uh, you know, originally coming up with this to support Health Net of Rock County and it's kind of a personal story for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we wanted to, it's, it's going to be fun and we're going to benefit from this, from the fun part. But we'd like to see that uh, Rock County Health Net get a chance to uh, benefit from this as well. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're pulling off. 1,300 miles, that's a track. Yeah, that's a lot of coffee rides and a lot of brewery rides. But we're just going to kind of string them all together. And uh, we're going to end up having a good time out of this. And Tom, you decided to join in on the track. You know, what's kind of the meaning behind this for you? Well, for me, you know, supporting Health Net is important. But it's also about a journey. And, you know, every ride that we're doing, these are all segments. They're all 50 to 75 miles a day. Sounds like a lot when you say 1,300. It's not so bad when you break it down. Have you guys ridden this far before? I have not. Um, I've been on like uh, 300, 350 mile trips and, and uh, enjoyed it, looked forward to it, and uh, just kind of wanted to add to the adventure. And there are people that are supporting you along the way, too, where you get to actually stop and stay. Yes, um, we're going to be connected with a warm showers network, and these are people that have opened their homes to uh, to bicycle bicycle riders. That um, you know, they might have an open backyard that we could pitch our hammock. They might have a, a, a basement that we could sleep on a futon or something. But uh, a lot of them want to share a meal and share a story, so that's what we're there for. All right, well, guys, I'm going to let you get ready here. Don't take off quite yet, but we'll let you guys get ready. We're going to bring in Danielle Wegman here with Rock County Health Net this morning. And, Danielle, this is a really special cause for you guys. Absolutely. Um, always so grateful that they are choosing us to support, and we just hope for the best. And if you want to stay tuned on their journey, um, they have the brewery Facebook, our Facebook, our website. So check that out and see some pictures of their journey. And we're already up to more than $550 donated this morning. Yes, we are. It is incredible. They haven't even left yet, and we already have that support. So, again, super grateful. All right. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for being here. This is the moment we have been waiting for. Dan and Tom, we wish you luck on your journey. And, of course, we'll be following you along the way. You guys go ahead and take off. Good luck. Safe travels. Thank you guys so much for the stuff that you're doing and for being so positive here in the community. There they go, guys, along the Ice Age Trail here in Janesville. <laughs> Such a unique cause. You know, they're going to see a lot of stuff along the way. They're going from here to Fort Atkinson. They'll head to Waukesha later today where they'll be staying, and they'll, they'll be going down to Chicago, making the whole loop all the way around Lake wow. Michigan. Over the next three to four weeks, they say it's going to be taking. But isn't that so cool? And they're going to see so much nature. We've already seen deer. We've seen turkeys. We've seen it all this morning, guys. I tell you what, a couple of really great guys here in Janesville. Oh, I am super jealous. This looks so fun. All for a good cause. Josh, I bet those bikes get kind of heavy, though, with all of their gear. 
Yeah, so that was part of the thing is, you know, obviously they're going to be gone for three to four weeks, so they have to decide what they're going to take and what they can't. So it took them a several times of like trying to figure out what they can actually fit into all of their bags on the bike. But they don't want it to be too heavy because, yeah, 1,300 miles, that's a long way to go with a lot of stuff, guys. Quite the workout. Sign me up for next year. I'm into it. Where are you going to put your dog? Oh, no. Can she ride along next to me? <laughs> She's a little lazy. I don't know. <laughs> you need to get one of those little, like, carriage things behind Leah. Yeah, like a little there backpack with their heads sticking out. That would, okay. Okay, I'm sold. Josh, thank oh, you. <laughs> Remember to let Josh know what inspires you in the 608. Reach out on social media or email in the 608 at WICTV.com. Do you know how heavy that would be? She's going to be 90 pounds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. All right. How about this? Getting paid to go to the bathroom. A university in South Korea is trying it out yeah, for the environment. A professor there has designed an eco-friendly toilet connected to a laboratory that uses human waste to produce energy. The Bivai toilet uses a vacuum pump to reduce water. Uh-oh. Yeah, right. Waste is sent to an underground tank where microorganisms break it down into methane, which helps power the building. Each person who uses the toilet gets rewarded with a campus-only currency so they can buy things like coffee, instant noodles, fruits, even books. There you go. Poop power. <laughs> the alliteration <laughs> is just beautiful. Poop. Beautiful Beautiful alliteration. Beautiful. All right. We uh, move on to weather now. <laughs> as much as I love to talk about this, let's get to Chris <laughs> Reese and Madison Certified Most Accurate Forecast. Hey, Chris. Yeah, good morning. We are talking temperatures as we go throughout the rest of today, warming up into the 70s. And then, of course, we're going to see an increase in cloud cover as well. Now, here's Doppler track right now throughout parts of Jefferson County. We're focused on Watertown this morning. We see the light little shower that moved on through. That's a part of a weak disturbance that impacted parts of southern Wisconsin earlier on. But for the most part, things have overall trended dry and we're going to stay dry likely throughout the rest of today. 40s, 50s and even some 60s all across the board early on this morning. That comes with sunshine too, but cloud cover will be on the increase along with better rain chances as we move towards the middle of the week. Mr. Reese, thank you very much. 6.48 now, coming up in the morning sprint, so you could win tickets to space. First, though, we want to say happy birthday uh, to all the kiddos turning three today. Thanks for celebrating with News 3 Now this morning. Six fifty two time for the morning sprint. We start with the latest on a missing couple in Dane County. Bart and Krista Halderson's son Chandler could make his initial appearance in court today. He's currently in the Dane County Jail arrested last week. The Haldersons were last seen alive July 1st. We are also expecting the results of an autopsy done over the weekend on human remains found in rural Dane County. Overnight, three million doses of the Moderna vaccine arrived in Indonesia from the U.S. It's one of the Biden administration's largest single shipments of the vaccine to another country. Biden is also sending millions of vaccine doses to Nepal, Moldova, and Bhutan. There is a fundraising effort to give away two tickets for a future flight on the Virgin Galactic after a successful ride into space over the weekend. You can enter for free, but hopeful astronauts can purchase more entries with donations to Space for Humanity. It's a nonprofit that hopes to make space travel more economically and racially diverse. The number of people killed in the condo collapse in Surfside, Florida is at 90 this morning. 71 of the victims have been identified. 31 remain unaccounted for. City leaders say the recovery effort is delicate and will take some more time to complete. Meantime, personal belongings like rings and jewelry and even unbroken wine bottles are being recovered and returned to their owners when possible. A tragedy avoided in Denver, where the MLB All-Star Game is taking place this week. Police found multiple guns and ammo in a hotel near the field where the game is scheduled to take place. Sources say it could have resulted in a Las Vegas-style shooting. Four people are in custody this morning. Festivities are scheduled to go on. Ahead of the Tokyo Olympics, the Japanese government is banning alcohol sales for the next two weeks. It's part of the new state of emergency because of COVID and the Olympics. Last week, Olympic officials banned spectators from going to the Games. A group of Madison and Dane County leaders will discuss what to do with several of the city's homeless issues. They'll be discussing the ongoing problems at Rindall Park and whether to move the homeless population there to a different east side location. That proposal failed to pass last week. Now, two subcommittees need to review it before another vote. Terrifying video here from Michigan at a festival showing a ride malfunctioning. It happened at the National Cherry Festival in Traverse City. The video showing the ride tipping up and down 
Witnesses claim that the ride was coming off of its platform. The ride's operator did shut off power and everyone got off safely. Governor Evers has vetoed a group of Republican bills that would delay local redistricting efforts and ban police from enforcing any future gun control laws. Evers says the redistricting bill creates too long of a delay in forming new maps and doesn't reflect current populations. The governor believes the gun bill is unconstitutional. Pope Francis made his first public appearance since intestinal surgery last Sunday. He gave his regular Sunday prayer. However, instead of doing it from his balcony at St. Peter's Square, he did it from the balcony of his hospital room. Officials say he is recovering well. 280,000 deaths and more than a million hospitalizations, all prevented thanks to COVID vaccines. That's according to a new Yale School of Public Health study. Researchers warn, though, people still need to get their shots, especially with variants circulating. Healthcare providers are prescribing less antibiotics in the U.S. Rhode Island researchers looked at more than 1,200 clinics and found antibiotic prescribing fell almost 4% in recent years in the outpatient setting. Researchers say the threat of antibiotic resistance is increasing, so more needs to be done to prevent overprescribing. Some pretty wild video out of St. Louis this morning. The steeple on Centenary United Methodist Church toppled over during strong winds. Take a look at the damage left behind. Debris scattered along several streets, narrowly missing nearby cars. Fortunately, though, nobody was injured. We're at 62 degrees right now. A mix of sun and the clouds out there. This is going to be the name of the game as we go throughout the day. Two points are still to the mid 50s, so that means it's comfortable. We saw a couple of showers early on this morning. Those are since gone by the wayside. We're going to watch cloud cover though increase yet again as we start to move towards the afternoon. Sunshine will filter through it at times. We'll top out at 76. We'll likely trend drier though as we go through the next six to 10 days, while at the same time trending warmer. We see that especially towards the extended part of your forecast there. By the time we get you towards next week, we're talking temperatures into the upper 80s some days with the heat index feeling like the 90s. No rain chances really in sight once we get beyond the end of this week. Chris Reese, thank you. Stay with us, folks. Another news and weather update coming up in half an hour.